Maybe one reason could be that in smaller communities there is less daily distractions and more saturation of information, um, therefore more engaged and informed citizens um, resulting. In general, the less palpable and more abstract a topic is, the less interest and enthusiasm it will generate. So we need the public um, uh, to know that um, voting the issues, candidates are alive, are um, charismatic. Uh, they need, we need to start reaching um, you know, the way President Obama did, just reaching into people. And finally, regarding the technology for the voting machines, as we, as we previously mentioned, biometrics, one simple idea could be, as a fan of iPhone 6, um, to create a technology where the, where the voters will have their fingerprints scanned at the time of voting. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alexis. I appreciate it. All right, next we'll hear from Max Kanan. Uh, thank you, Senator uh, Allen. My name is Max Kanan. I am an elections and campaign finance attorney. And uh, full disclosure, I was uh, your campaign's attorney, actually, in the last election. But I speak here only for myself. I'm not a plant by any means. Um, I, uh, first of all, uh, before I get to my remarks, I just wanted to thank you, uh, Senator, uh, and thank, um, well, he's no longer here, but thank uh, Assemblyman uh, Ridley Thomas for holding uh, this oversight hearing. Uh, it's very refreshing uh, in a day and age right now where many states are trying to restrict voting rights across uh, the union. Uh, here we have, um, we have you and we have Assemblymember Thomas, or um, Ridley Thomas, excuse me, who are actually looking to find ways to increase voting and understand that low voter turnout that dips as low as it has uh, is a problem. Uh, one uh, issue that I think is uh, affecting uh, voting uh, in Los Angeles County uh, is the fact that uh, our lifestyles in terms of how we work, um, where we work, and where we live have changed. Rush, you know, it's apropos here in the MTA uh, headquarters to uh, mention um, how long a commute can be for people who are reliant on public transportation only. Um, and in fact, uh, notwithstanding our, uh, the quote unquote car culture, uh, we have many people who are uh, in, a lot in the city of Los Angeles, at least 10% were completely reliant on cars, uh, excuse me, reliant on public transportation. Uh, we have different work hours. Work uh, for many people is no longer nine to five. Um, rush hour does not end at six o'clock. It does not even end at eight o'clock. Uh, and that is when our polls close. Now, uh, you, Senator, are probably f quite familiar, uh, having some uh, ancestral lineage uh, with the United Kingdom. Um, in the United Kingdom, they have elections, not on the weekend like in most European countries, but in fact they have their elections on Thursdays. Um, and yet they have routinely uh, far higher turnout uh, than we do. Um, they have turnouts that often, in most elections since 1945, uh, reach about approximately 70%. Um, the lowest turnout they ever had was just under 60% um, in an election that was basically a foregone conclusion. Um, the difference uh, there, uh, one key difference between California and the United Kingdom uh, in terms of the electoral process is that their polls close at 10 o'clock at night. They open at the same time that ours do. Now, I'm not saying that we should automatically uh, move forward our poll closing times, especially in light of the fact that more and more people are voting uh, by mail, um, but or that even doing so would be a complete panacea to low turnout. But I think that it does have, uh, it does play a major role in terms of the low turnout. The fact that uh, by the time that many people are arriving home, people who may be not as civically engaged but willing to vote, uh, by the time that they arrive home from work, by the time the, the polls have already closed or are about to close, campaigns are no longer reaching them. And you have experience from your own campaigns for both the school board uh, and the state senate and campaigns also that you um, have worked on in the past, that the primary goal of a campaign in its closing hours is to flush, uh, flush out um, and turn out it's the most dedicated voters who these campaigns have already identified and no have not yet voted. Um, that would not uh, increase, and this has been uh, brought up by other panelists today, um, that does not, um, 
that tends not to increase turnout overall because when you are turning out your most committed identified voters, you're generally not turning out those who are only mildly civically engaged and possibly inclined to vote. You're turning out those who uh, you know are more dedicated and are more likely to vote anyway. Um, and also, you know, it's for most campaigns, uh, even the most dedicated campaigns with great field operations will stop turning out voters at least 15 minutes before the close of polls. Uh, I do think that in terms of extending poll hours and making it easier for individuals to work, especially working, uh, working class individuals who are n less likely to have traditional um, nine to five schedules, less likely to get paid time off for work, um, and less likely to have um, less likely to live close to work and to have uh, their own independent means of travel, where uh, if you get off work and you live far away, you might be able to drive very quickly. If you are somebody who is a minimum wage um, laborer, you get off work late, you may have a very long uh, commute and be unable to vote. And I think that this is an issue uh, that does deserve, uh, that does deserve uh, some study, uh, especially because of all of, of many of the proposed ideas today, I think that it would be one of uh, the less expensive um, increases. Uh, finally, uh, to conclude, I want to say there are many excellent ideas brought up today, uh, many excellent points that were raised, many uh, excellent statistics. Um, one final statistic I will bring about late uh, poll closing times uh, in the United Kingdom, in their most recent election, voters between the ages of 18 and 24 uh, had a 44% turnout rate. Voters who were between the ages of 25 and 35 had a voter turnout rate of over 55%. So it is true that younger voters um, vote less than older voters, and um, that habit, uh, you across the pond, if you will, that habit bears out over there. But their turnout of younger voters is so far higher than the turnout of our younger voters, I think that the fact that um, their, their poll closing times, their poll opening times, is something that is worth uh, studying. Um, finally, uh, to conclude, and thank you again for letting me speak. Um, I wanted to endorse the idea of uh, automatic registration uh, for voters, where people are already registered to vote the minute they become eligible, rather than having to uh, register themselves. Uh, you and I actually uh, disagree on the constitutionality of the Australian voting system. Uh, I do not believe that we can have mandatory voting uh, in the United States, uh, but I do believe that we can and we should have um, automatic registration, uh, and that will also increase voting. And thank you for your time. Yeah, absolutely. The, Max, the one, the one question about the UK is surely uh, that high turnout has to do with the fact that um, it's during you know, the prime minister's, the parliamentary election, and we have talked about the fact that in this country, there we, we still, thank God, do have relatively high turnout in California during the presidential elections, and that the UK, they're oftentimes having an election only once every five years. Now, of course, they do have these by-elections, these local elections from time to time, and I would assume that the turnout's significantly lower in those elections, right? The turnout is lower in those elections, but it is higher than special elections that we have, um, that we have in the United States for individual um, member seats. And I thought the comparison would be interesting. Um, Councilmember um, Mirish had brought up the fact that he felt California was becoming a one-party state. Um, in the United Kingdom, uh, parliamentary uh, constituencies, which are similar to our congressional districts, our city council districts here, in fact, in the fact that they are uh, single-member uh, individual uh, districts drawn by population. Well, generally by population there. We're a little bit more precise here. Um, Voters who were in districts that were likely safe seats for uh uh, either of the two major parties in the United Kingdom, or actually there are three, uh, had lower turnout than constituencies that were heavily contested. And I think that that is an interesting um, statistic to look at in California, where the presidential le election is often a foregone conclusion um, in the general election, and where we have a number of um, where we have a number of safe districts where. Um, even under the top two system, uh, we, they are likely to return a Democrat or a Republican, um, and they are not likely to be contested. Right. That, yes, that makes sense. I mean, they have much shorter ballot, and we, you know, I think you vote for 
you're a member of parliament. You, as you say, you don't even vote directly for the prime minister. You're a member of parliament, and maybe one or two county or city commissioners, and that's it. Um, so, but but it, it, some interesting lessons to be learned. Um, thank you, thank you very much. All right, well, next we'll hear from AJ Wilmer, and I know Peter Choi is back here as well, and he wants to make some public comments. So nice to see you, uh, AJ. Thank you. 